Hi everybody, my name is Eric and I'm here with you with, uh, with the CCTV. So welcome to this and um, I'm very honored actually to have uh, Sahil, VP of uh, Wholesale of uh, Omantel next to me and with me here. How are you? Thank you Eric. Uh, thank you for having me over here. It's more than an honor. It's more than an honor. Um, tell me, um, why was it important to bring the GCCM to Oman? I think uh, it was important for Omantel and for Oman to uh, bring GCCM. Uh, GCCM is a major event uh, in, in telecom and uh, Omantel and Oman has been growing a lot on in international side on wholesale side. Oh absolutely side. yes. So I think it was important to showcase uh, Oman to the international uh, uh, players. We are dealing with almost everyone most of the players who are here or most of the operators and the content players who are who attended the uh, the, the conference uh, today and yesterday and or the, or the first day as well uh, i would say 90 percent of them are our partners mm -hmm. so it was important to invite them over here and host them in oman and uh, i'm very happy that this event actually went very very well and uh, yeah, i had fantastic feedback exactly yeah, fantastic. And, and and to be very honest i heard a good feedback from 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 most of the uh, customers over here uh, people are very happy and they're looking forward for the next year. Customer experience, yeah? Yes. That's what it all is about, right? Exactly. <laughs> Tell me, um, the Middle East region changed a lot over the last five years. But from a wholesale point of view, what actually did you see changed over the last five years? There is a lot of focus from uh, the content player into this region. So. They have done the replication of American content to Europe. They have done it in, in Asia. Now mm -hmm. they are moving into, into uh, Middle East. Uh, and why Middle East? Because Middle East uh, very rightly fits into the, uh, into the uh, you know, middle ground between the Asia and Europe. And on the other side, it also connects Africa. Mm -hmm. And then the new route that is opening uh, in, through the Middle East is China. Mm -hmm. so, the CPAC, uh, uh, let's say the initiative of the Chinese government, uh, they are building roads and they are building fiber or they have already built fiber coming into Pakistan Correct. and then from Pakistan into the Middle East and then from Middle East they will take this uh, into Europe and other places. A uh, number of content players are now bringing their uh, data centers into Middle mm -hmm. East. Uh, traffic is growing. Um, obviously our neighbors are also growing. So if I call Africa our neighbor, that's the most probably next five years is going to be the demand coming from Africa. <clears throat> so I would say it was a big change that we have seen over the last five years. Uh, prices have gone down. Uh, there are a lot of new cable systems uh, have, uh, have landed oh, yes. in, into the region. Uh, from a Mantel point of view, in the last five years, we have landed five systems. Mm -hmm. It's not small. And we're talking about an investment of 40 to $50 million in each. So we're talking about $250 million investment. Major investment. Exactly. Yes. So and you'll be surprised to know that those five new cable systems that we have landed, 60 to 65% of it is consumed. Number of cable systems like A1, BBG, an old cable system like EIG, why old is like 2013, mm -hmm. all of them have gone into upgrades, multiple upgrades. So, which means there is a demand mm -hmm. and there is a supply, uh, which is, I would say at the moment is on a slow side. So there are a number of initiatives in this region which are now coming in. Um, a few, uh, I would not say a few weeks, let's say October 2019, there was an announcement of a cable system mm -hmm. coming from Australia to Oman. Correct. Uh, that's a new, unique route, uh, bypassing all the seas coming directly into, into Oman, into Middle East. Obviously, they're not coming to Oman. They're coming to Oman so that they can use it and go outside into, into Africa as well as into Europe. We already have deployed a cable system from Salala, which is connecting Salala to um, Somalia. Mm -hmm. uh, the whole idea of this cable system, which is called Gulf to Africa, uh, is to connect two parts of Somalia and then from Somalia going into Ethiopia. Okay. So Omantel, uh, we have Golis, we have Telesom and Ethio Telecom. We are the, uh, the partner into this cable system. We had some setbacks uh, in one part of, the, uh, part of Somalia. We landed the cable it's system. It's never easy. It's, it's never difficult easy. and it's first time. Uh, landing a cable in a uh, place like uh, Barbara and Basasu. Mm -hmm. uh, we had some challenges. We overcome those challenges. We are now serving. And the beauty over there is, uh, and I would like to highlight this, that the day one, when we started the network, Goalies as an operator had 1 million subscriber base. Mm -hmm. Their first few weeks, 
bandwidth consumption after deploying a full fledged cable system investing huge amount of money 700 megabits amazing today they are at 30 gigabits yeah and i am talking about a time range of june 2017 till october 2019 that's amazing from 700 megabits and a mobile operator moving to uh, 30 gigs that's amazing that's amazing and that shows that there is a huge demand and we've been there we've sat with them uh, they were also here uh, they attended the event mm -hmm. as well that changed the life of lifestyle of, of people over there absolutely Absolutely. A region, a country where you were buying uh, forty dollar to fifty dollar yes. per megabits, you have your own cable system, and you grow from seven hundred megabits to thirty meg gigabits over a one and a half year. That shows how big lifestyle change comes in, into that country. Absolutely. So this is what we are doing now. Mm -hmm. So we are opening up more markets. So the idea is that we already have good backbone network. Mm -hmm. uh, we have fourteen cable system landing in in, in Oman. Tell with Oman in Oman. We have uh, two more cable systems with Dorito. So altogether, Oman has 16 cable systems that are passing through Oman, that are landing in Oman, connecting and, and connecting to each other in Oman. Uh, that generates huge traffic, uh, which is transiting Oman. And we are talking about five to six terabits of capacity that only transit through Oman. So from one cable system into another yes. cable system. So what next we are looking at is to create another hub like Muscat mm -hmm. in Salal. Salal allowing uh, the content player who most probably today are not able to move into most of the East uh, African countries because mm -hmm. of one reason or the other, allow them place to host over here and then they start serving their customers. Okay. So we are now talking to... We need to make the bridge. We are making a bridge. Mm -hmm. We are making a bridge. These content players want to now land. There are in discuss we are in discussion with four of them to land four new submarine cable system that are connecting East Africa, Europe, Asia, in Salala. That's the true hub function. Exactly. That's the true hub function. Um, another question. We, I mean, we were talking about the last two days a lot about digital transformation. Yes. So what role does digital transformation play within Omantel? And how do you see digital transformation as a whole? So how do you address it? And what do you do with it? And where do you see the benefits of it? So I was uh, I was hearing the the I was in the uh, panel discussion um, uh, sitting there you were moderating it. There was good discussion where someone I think uh, Shabir said that uh, digital transformation is more of a buzzword. Buzzword. Yeah. I think what is happening uh, over the last ten years, if you look at it, the the lifestyle has changed. Completely. The usage has changed. We are now moving to smartphones we used to have nokia mm -hmm. 3300 we have uh, iphone <laughs> 11 uh, you have almost everything in your hand now because you have almost everything in your hand you're doing your banking you're doing your insurance you're doing your uh, medical uh, fintech everything is on your on, on your mobile you don't need to go to a bank to either withdraw the money or to send money to somebody else so people have started ab adopting this new lifestyle uh, obviously, with this new lifestyle, a lot comes into digital era. Like what we were discussing is that we have database, we have information. Yes. Now, how to utilize that information and provide more and more to our subscribers, to the to the customers, to and the give them and the best, better exactly. customer experience. Again. Look at look at what Amazon is doing. Look mm -hmm. at what other companies like Amazon are doing. That they have analytics where, where they tell you that yes, you have looked into one of the perfume. Two days later, they will bring another perfume and they will offer you to, to buy that. Mm -hmm. I think the word in digital transformation is ease. Mm -hmm. Digital transformation gave you one thing and that is ease of doing things. Ease of buying, ease of spending money. People are spending, I was looking at, the, at uh, one of the, I was reading some, some, somewhere, that because of the ease that Amazon have created, people are spending 34% more than usual they were spent. There you go. Right? And that is not because they like to spend, because it is much easier for them to spend, so they keep on spending. Yeah. That's another thing what they what happens after. Sort afterwards. of a self-fulfilling prophecy. It is. <laughs> so what we are doing in Omantel on digital transformation, obviously um, we have to lead as a telecom operator, we have to lead the digital transformation. So Omantel, uh, I would say uh, exactly five years ago, uh, we had a strategy which we called Omantel 3.0. Mm -hmm. So we were at Omantel 1.0. 
we took a, uh, a leap into Umantel 3.2, which is more digital, ICT. So what we have been doing in the last five years, we have digitized most of the things. So there is a difference between digitization and digital Correct. transformation. Correct. So we took the first step, which is digitizing mm -hmm. everything into telecom. And I think as a telecom operator, uh, uh, with all my uh, uh, respect to content players, we have much more data about our customers than what content players are gathering. Yes. But telecom operators have not been able to utilize that data and provide better services to the end customers. So we have been now working on that. We have deployed big data. We have been moving towards uh, uh, digital uh, sales. So today in Oman, if you look at it, as Omantel, I would say that our, almost 60% of our sale, people who buy watchers, they buy online. Yeah. They don't go to the shop. Yes, it's changing the uh, the the uh, you know the whole supply chain model. Sure. Instead of us delivering cars, now it's people are now moving into again ease, so they can sitting in their home, they can buy. Yes. Five real. You can't blame them. And you can't exactly. blame them. Yeah. So. We have moved into that, that, that direction. We are now more advertising to our customers using digital channels because it is getting much, much closer to, to the customer and giving them a targeted audience. We are, okay. we, are, we are targeting our audience. We don't want to go, and as, as what we were discussing in the, in the panel, we don't want to offer everything to everyone. No. What we want to do is we want to go to target audience. This is what we want to offer you. Personalize because we want it. it. It's very personalized. Yeah. And just imagine, we are not a very big country with population point of view. We are 4.5 million population. But personalizing, maybe not to 4.5, but maybe 3 million customers, are personalized messages, personalized offering, what they want, what your customer, which is maybe an enterprise customer, what is their pattern, Absolutely. how they are utilizing their, their, uh, their te telecommunication, how much they are paying, and try to give them something extra mm -hmm. on what they require, mm -hmm. and not offering a, you know, the a call, call towards Pakistan to a Chinese uh, customer or a call to China to, uh, let's say, to a Pakistani customer. No, and, and you, you also need to, and, and the, the uh, digitization and the digital transformation will help you as well to, to, to differentiate yourself from exactly. the competition because exactly. competition is here and competition is in the region. And that's not going to stop. No, exactly, exactly, which is a good thing. Which is, which is good a good thing, thing for everyone. It um, also improve. It allows us to improve ourselves on on, on day to day basis because yeah. I think it's it's a human nature as well that you are only push when you have a competition behind you. Normally, yes. Not normally, yes. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, how will Omantel's global strategy evolve in the future? And um, what do you see um, as the most pressing priorities that will be on your agenda? Actually, so global growth for Omantel. So mm -hmm. for, for this question, I have to give you a little bit of a uh, of history of two years. Uh, 2017, Omantel acquired 21.9% uh, shares in Zen uh, Group. Mm -hmm. Now, Zen Group operates in uh, nine, eight markets. Mm -hmm. Oman is nine markets. It was a strategic deal where we had a controlling stakes in the, com in the company, and it is now our subsidiary. Mm -hmm. So having Zen being our subsidiary, we have move from 3 million subscriber base or 3.5 million subscriber base to overnight yeah. 53 million subscriber yeah. base. So that was the first step for Mantel to grow. Whole lot of responsibility. Whole lot of responsibility, a lot of money as well. Yes. <laughs> and you are right, a whole lot of responsibility because Zen is a mobile operator. Yes. We are fixed and mobile operator. And our DNA, if you ask us Mantel, we are a fixed operator. Yes. And that's why we are very successful in wholesale because our DNA, the way the company was started was a fixed network. So the big responsibility that we have in the next few years is to aggregate Zen international requirements, uh, which is going to be uh, exclusively providing services to, uh, to Zen and Umantel. And obviously okay. we will be serving all our customers sure. the way we are doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is the first step on the, on the global growth. So we have done the first step. Uh, from one single country operator where you have yeah. isolation within the country. Uh, obviously, there is a growth level. A lot of things. A, a lot, lot of things. things. And exciting news. Yes. And um, uh, I think the strategy is in place. Yes. I think you convinced me that, that you're ready to do so. And uh, the plans are there. And yes. you're rolling it out. So fantastic. Congratulations for that. Thank you very much. And I want to thank you very much for, uh, for this interview. And uh, ladies welcome. and gentlemen, 
Thank you so much. It has been an honor to have Sayali on the, on the CCTV. I'll see you next time. Ciao for now. Thank you.